Hello and welcome to the short introduction how to analyse your flow cytometry data in R. This episode is about GG Cyto. GG Cyto is used to visualise your flow cytometry data. So previously we've looked at using auto plot and some quick plotting tools, but now we'll have a look to see how we can have some more control over the visual visualisation. So I've loaded the same data as we had previously, and we will have a quick look at it now. So I've use the code from the other videos and now we just have a quick look at it to uh, confirm what it is so we can see it's a flow set with nine experiments so I've taken the first nine files from the FRFCMZZZV <laughs> full repository um, set which is um, I think it's flow cap 3 I can use FS apply and look at the file names I can look at the column names, i.e. the flow rules. I can see there's 12 of them. And I can look at the gating hierarchy I've produced just here. So this is the same as we did the other day. And we can look at the autoplot outputs. So this is just using the default settings and we'll show the, the forward and side scatter, the single gating, and the um, was it Fitzy versus P Texas Red. So one of the issues with the autoplot is that you don't have any control over where the labels are, of the scaling necessarily, um, or of the layout in general. It just creates a quick plot, like you can see above my head. So let's first of all fix this plot. So we want to fix the scaling, and we want to add gate names, and we probably want to adjust the positions of the gates. So to do this we'll be using GG Saito. Now before we start with GG Saito, I should point out that you need to look up a ggplot. So ggcyto is a visualization program that's based on another visualization program in R called ggplot2. Now ggplot2 is very useful and very powerful and you won't get a lot out of ggcyto, the one for cytometry, without understanding how ggplot2 works. Um, the easiest way to do this is to just google ggplot2 tutorials and you'll see a lot of these tutorials. Sadly, didn't quite work, there we go. So if we go to the Tidyverse, which is its official web page, I assume, it gives you some basic usage and some learning points. Um, the first one is very good. It goes through, this is the an online R book and you can use some default data loaded into R and teach you how to do some dot plots, how to change the points, how to change the colors. Again, if you go back to Google, there's lots of other ones, including the complete course. Um, and I would advise looking through this. If you want to do any data visualization in R, you basically need to know how to use ggplot2. Okay, so let's pretend you've looked at ggplot2. And we're now going to look at GG Saito. So we want to fix this plot that's above my head. So the nomenclature, the way you use GG Saito, is the same as GG Plot. And so we're going to call our plots P. We're going to load GG Saito. We're going to load our gating set, which is called Auto GS. So I'm looking at line 16 here. AES stands for aesthetics, and that is what we want to plot. So we want to plot the x axis as x fit c area, the y axis is xp texas red area, and the subset is singlets. So I press control enter, it loads, you don't see anything. If I were to type in p, you will be able to see what is produced, which is just an empty plot, because I've just produced an empty plot, I haven't asked it to put any data in. So into p, I will be adding geometric hex um, points, and my binning is 256, so similar to what we did with the auto plot. And again, if I go to P now, I see I've now got some data. Very nice. I can add some gating, so I'm using geometric gate, gating set, get population paths, 4 to 7. So I know it's 4 to 7 because of what we did earlier, the last one, uh, the last video, and the geometric gate is the way of GG Saito finding gates. 
So I've done that and now if I press P I should hopefully see a gate appear. Fantastic. Um, I want to add some statistics so I've got geometric statistics and I get the paths again and I choose percentage and the gate name. And I do this adjusting. So let's let's remove this adjusting for now. And look at P again. And now we've got the percentage gates. And there's percentages on the gates, which is fantastic. It would be nice to move them slightly so I could re-add that adjust. So we have the XY coordinates and we can we can kind of nudge them left and right as, as we need to. So let's see what this does. Now this is actually going to do an overlay of an overlay because I've reapplied it to the same plot. So I'm going to get multiple gates, which isn't perfect. So I can start again by just going up to the top one. Control enter, control enter, control enter, control enter. And we can look at P. And the gate, is, uh, the gate labels in a slightly more sensible place. I'm reasonably happy with that. You can spend forever adjusting these and you're more than welcome to do so. So this plot doesn't look too bad, um, but this, the, the scaling could be worse. So to, to adjust the scaling, you use something called my pars, which is my parameters. So you can use ggsite.parameter set, and you can choose the limits of the x and y. So the limits are currently 3 and 5 for the y, and 3 and 5 for the x. Um, which, which, to be honest, is, it looks pretty good to me. So if I try that, so I create the variable called my pars, then I apply my pars to P. Then I can load P again, and hopefully we'll see a slightly different shape. There we go. Maybe a bit too much on the right now, but as you saw with the auto plotting, it could be very wrong. So this is something to pay attention to. And the labels are terrible because these are R safe um, name, name types, which have the dots and no spaces and no slashes. So I'm just going to relabel them. So I'm going to use the P plus labs, X is CD4, Y is CD3. And I'll load it again. And there we got a nice, nice plot. If you need any assistance or any help, the same is true for anything in um, R. You quite type a question mark and type in, type in ggplot. Or, oh, sorry, ggcyto. I've been saying ggplot too much. And you'll get the help file on the right. I'm talking about how GG Saito works. So, for example, um, R code. And of course, again, you can go to the internet and type in GG Saito. And you'll be directed to the, the Bioconductor page, so uh, the GitHub, and you'll find lots of, lots of help. Um, it's actually been moved to something called the Saitoverse which has been set up to um, to keep consistency between a lot of the, the more popular flow cytometry packages. And so if you come here, you can go to examples, ggsito, and you've got lots of help files. And you can scroll down and look at different ways of interacting with ggsito. But we'll carry on ourselves. So, we had, we had a single plot here. If we wanted to do similar to auto plot and have all the plots, we can just remove the subset. So we were looking at just one file. We can do the same, but with the entire flow set or gating set in this case. And we should get a nice multi-plot image with all of the types. So you see, it's a bit of a mess now, so we'd need to change some things. So we can change the font size and the positioning, or we could always just make the plot bigger in general and it would look a bit better. But there's a lot of power and a lot of flexibility, and, and, and what you have to do is look through the help files and find out all, all the different things you can do, such as changing the colors, changing the densities, um, changing the axis, changing the titles. And um, one of the things you can do is something called faceting. So faceting is a way of um, subcategorizing your plots or your data in general. 
and this um, takes advantage of something called the phenol data. So the phenol data is a is a, some is a extra bit of data in flow core or any flow set. So if I type in p data in AutoGS, AutoGS being my gating set, I can see my phenol data is actually empty. All it has in the bottom left here are the file names. However, in the download from Flow Repository, there's also a CSV file. That CSV file contains lots of useful information such as patient and treatment. So what I'm going to do is load that CSV file. So I've got CSV file, read CSV, and this is the CSV file from Flow Repository. And if we, I can look at the CSV file, and we can see we've got file name, um, treatment group, and um, what, what they're looking for. And this, this is from Flowcap3, as I said. And what we need to do is we need to merge our phenotype data in a flow set with a CSV file. So to do this, we use the merge command. The merge command is just a default R command, and you can find the instructions in the, the help file to merge two data frames. So what we're doing is we're going to merge our phenol data from our gating set with the CSV file. And we're going to merge them using the name and the FCS file name. So the FCS file name is from um, the, the flow set and the name is from the um, CSV file. Or oh, actually it's the other way around. So now I've created something called new data and if I open that it's now just my nine files. Now we have the treatments associated with them, the sample description or the patient name I assume and the characteristic which is all part of the training set. Um, there is one caveat is that for the, the phenol data you must, the row names must be the name of the FCS file. So, so when you do the merge it automatically removes the, the, this row data, row name data, so we'll have to apply it again using this row names command. And then we tell that our gate and accept phenotype data should be this new um, a data set we made, or um, data frame, sorry. And there we go. So we've now got phenotyping data with the, the file name, the treatment, the sample description. And this is really useful because this means we can start subcategorizing our plots. So here I'm making plots called PT using GD Cyto. So I'm just going to do CD4 and CD8 and the singlets. I will do a, a, a geometric hex, exactly the same as before. Um, I'm going to choose the, my parameters that I know will work for this. But what I'm going to do now is something called facet gridding. So I am going to plot my plots of sample treatment versus sample description. And you'll see how useful this is in a second. And so here we've got my nine plots my CD4 versus CD3, but what I have here is the, the sample uh, description, which is probably the patient, and the treatment, or the, uh, well, what, what gene they're looking for. I don't know a huge amount about this data, as you can probably tell. But this can be, can be very useful, because you can imagine having treatment versus patient, or responder versus non-responder, or cell type versus, versus gene, and this way you can very nicely uh, visualize your data. And of course you can then add gates to this and the statistics and you'll find this very useful. But you just have to work, make sure that you've got some good um, annotated data to start with. I'll very quickly look at back gating. So this is how you put a pretty colour on top of another plot to show the, <laughs> the gate. So we'll call this P3, GG Saito again, CD3 versus CD4, and the subset is root. So with GG Saito, with a gating set, you always have to have a gate. And so this is the root, so this is the top gate, this is the no gate. Um, geometric hex again, because it looks good, but I'm going to do 128 bins for no particular reason. Limits again, I know this works. And I'm going to do something called now, on line 49, geometric overlay. So I'm going to overlay my CD3 and CD4 plus, plus gate. And so this is my gate from my gating set. And I want to overlay with dots the size of 0 0.01 and the alpha, which is the opacity or how transparent it is, is 0 0.05. And the color, orange. If you're American, you're more than welcome to get rid of the U. 
Um, you're probably going to want the alpha, this opacity, to be quite low, um, so you can see the density underneath. This is going to take a little while on my computer. Um, I'm not sure why, so let's just fast forward the video. Right, you can see that what has appeared above my head now is um, a nice little orange back gate onto the, the CD4 and uh, CD3 positive population onto my platform area. Um, and there's obviously a lot more complexity to GG Cyto than just doing these simple plots. Um, and the power is you can do this over thousands of iterations and create very consistent plot types. Um, if you want to export them, by the way, you can just use this command called GG Save. So I want to save GG Save Plot 1. I will use P2, which is the one we did earlier, which is the faceted 9 plot image. And if I go to my files, I'll be able to load plot one, and I can um, see the one I saved. For help, as ever, you can use GT save question mark, and you can realize you can change the TPIs, the size, the file types. Um, and of course, you can always run this into loops, into fun in loops or into functions, and so you can um, do this over and over again. I strongly recommend doing a GG plot tutorial and then looking at the help files for GG Saito. Right. Thank you, I hope this has been of help and um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.